Straight ahead on 12 News, a Plymouth man who tested his creativity with a Thanksgiving staple. Plus, something for Robbinsdale residents to celebrate this fall, completion of several construction projects. But first, a liquor store opening that's already proving to be a regional draw. It's not a regular liquor store. 12 News starts right now. Hello everyone, today shoppers lined up outside of the new Total Wine Store in Maple Grove just waiting for the doors to open. The Beer, Wine and Spirits Superstore is the third Total Wine to open up in the metro area. And as Shannon Slatten reports, it could be a game changer. Well, my husband actually had been to one and recommended, hey, this is opening today, you should go and check it out. A steady stream of shoppers and a busy parking lot would be a dream come true for any new business. But for Total Wine, it's more like deja vu. You name it, there's just about anything that you want in there. The store wouldn't let our camera inside, but shoppers in Maple Grove came out with full carts and satisfied faces. It's a great store for beer, especially. Hank Heinrichs came here to stock up. I'll buy some beer for my neighbors up in Bemidji get a better price. And he wasn't alone. They really do get people that are literally buying cases and cases of wine and various other things. It's not a regular liquor store. Retail expert David Brennan calls Total Wine a category killer. They have incredible drawing power because of the price, but also in terms of the depth of merchandise. Think of other category killers, like shopping Best Buy for consumer electronics, Office Max for office supplies, and Home Depot instead of your local hardware store. If you're looking for spirits, this is obviously the destination place to go, and you're willing to go a bigger distance because the prices and the selection are going to be better. That isn't quite the best news for local liquor stores. If you happen to be a, a small uh, liquor operator and you're close to Total Wine, people are going to drive right by you. But Brennan says local liquor stores can become the more convenient quick grab option because Total Wine stores will not be popping up in every city. We'll probably get a couple more and then that'll be pretty much all you need. It's really accessible. It shouldn't be any problem in getting back again. In Maple Grove, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. Total Wine is eyeing the Southwest Metro next. They are planning to open a Chanhassen store and they have expressed interest in a store in Minnetonka. The Golden Valley City Council has approved a list of demands that it wants to see in the final light rail blue line extension project. Among them, the city wants a park and ride built at the planned Golden Valley Road station. The city also wants to see improvements to the Golden Valley Road Theodore Worth Parkway intersection due to increased traffic expected from having a stop there. Public hearing and city council vote on the project could happen in February. Some relief is on the way for road construction weary residents in Robbinsdale. This summer, at least seven road projects were going on at the same time. As Sonia Goins shows us, residents are glad they're almost over. This is what residents in Robbinsdale have had to deal with all summer long. Road work was done on 36 and Noble. And Hennepin County crews reconstructed Lake Drive. Work was also done on the Crystal Lake Regional Trail. That boardwalk that goes out around the western edge of Crystal Lake is a wonderful area to, to go out and walk on and look out on the lake. About time, because it's been like all summer. Trina Halverson says the road projects were a big inconvenience. It's been hard to get around with the traffic because we have to go through all the back roads and everything. We just live like right behind there. I have to leave work like 10 minutes early if I have to like get around this area. Emmanuel says getting around town on bike wasn't a smooth ride either. We've been trying to ride a bike with my family and we couldn't go to. But that's nothing compared to what Elizabeth Johnson has had to deal with. Horrible. It's horrific. And like right now, we can't get out of the building. She lives in a handicap accessible building. Doing simple errands has been anything but easy. I tried to get up there and I can't get up there. I need to go to the bank and need to go to the post office and I can't do it. Our cameras were rolling when she tried to get out and about. This is terrible. Crews had to shovel dirt off the sidewalk so she could pass. Fortunately, most of these road projects are coming to an end. Joint Water Commission project being number one, that, that's completed. County Road 9 being this project uh, is nearing completion. Crews 
are improving sidewalks and adding better sewer drains. They're also replacing underground pipes. The County Road 9 project not only includes amenities for motorists, but bicyclists too. There are dedicated bike lanes on both sides of the road. Residents like Elizabeth say they're glad to see the orange signs go away. I've been praying about it for a year. <laughs> we can do nothing but, but thank the residents for their patience during this year. There's been a lot of work going on. In Robinsville, Sonia Williams, 12 News. The County Road 9 project is expected to be completed by November 20th. The Fair School in Crystal may expand to accept kindergarten students as early as next fall. This is the first year the Magnet School is part of the Robbinsdale School District, a move approved by the state legislature. The school currently serves students in grades 4 through 8, but the district is considering phasing in kindergarten through third grade as those grade levels are phased out of the, out of the other Fair School in Minneapolis. Two seniors from the Anoka Hennepin School District are hoping for a prestigious scholarship. They are semifinalists for a National Merit Scholarship. Delane Cleveland introduces us to the semifinalist from Champlain Park who uses his knowledge to help others. An orchestra has dozens of performers. Yet each musician works together to make a beautiful piece of music. One of the faces in this group is Jake Coonan. It's something that I wasn't that good at until recently, and just the more the more I play, the more I can like the better I can get. But music isn't the only thing at which this Champlain Park senior excels. Since there's no net force, what does the upward force of tension have to be? And it's also not the only time you'll find him working with others to make good things happen. I'm five of the students that I had last year in AP Calculus approached me about setting up a math tutor center in my room after school. Yes, this aspiring engineer has a passion for math and he uses his knowledge to tutor students in both algebra and calculus. Some of them have been staying till five o'clock at night, so sometimes two and a half hours after school helping other students and they're very engaged and interested in how the other students are d learning and progressing and how they're doing on their assignments and tests. It's cool to help the other people, like when you explain it, it helps you understand it better as well. How would you draw a free body diagram of this system? Understanding a subject matter hasn't been much of a problem for Jake. Really most of it is just um, paying attention during class. Paying attention in class helped him earn a 4.1 GPA. He's also the only student at Champlain Park who was named a National Merit semifinalist. I'm very proud of him, but it's, it's not surprising. It was, it's completely expectable um, based on who he is. At Champlain Park, Delaney Cleveland, 12 News. Jake hasn't committed to a college yet, but his number one choice is the University of Minnesota. He'll find out whether he wins a National Merit Scholarship this spring. Coming up, how a Plymouth photographer turned cranberries into a work of art. And then later in sports highlights from a big night of prep volleyball playoff action. But first, cloudy and chilly on Friday. Temperatures turn a bit more November-like with highs in the 40s. Well, when you think of Thanksgiving feasts, turkey stuffing and pumpkin pie usually make that list. Well, then there's one special berry, and a Plymouth photographer captures the essence of cranberries in a new book. Neil Persley explains what's behind his pursuit of this little red gem. So anyhow, it was this at 6 a.m. in the morning, and anybody that knows about anything about photography, it was very light was very dim. It's a fast ISO and it's wide open on the camera setting. Wayne Martin is a photographer by trade. I have been a commercial photographer in Plymouth for about 22 years now. Most of his clients are corporate, but he had an itch to try something different. I thought, you know, this has got a lot of potential. Speaking at a Plymouth Library lecture series, Wayne shared his experiences on self-publishing a book on, of all things, Cranberries. The first thing I wanted to know was why cranberries? I grew up in central Wisconsin. Uh, Central Wisconsin is sort of the epicenter of the cranberry uh, industry in the world. About five years ago, Wayne learned about photography techniques with materials in ice. He thought, why not cranberries? It's kind of all serendipity. Uh, you know, I had no idea what I was going to come up with, but I really did like the result, and consequently, uh, I developed that idea a little bit larger than what I first envisioned it to be. In his book, Cranberry is Revealed, you first see his artistic vision, then the bogs and spectacular fall harvest. And I had this idea of steam rising off these marshes in the 
coolness of the fall morning with sun rising in the background, backlighting these things, and I thought this would be really something spectacular. There was just one more dimension he had to add. Every single woman that I showed my prototype of the book to, what, what did they tell me? Where's the food? <laughs> the book comes full circle with, what else? Cranberry recipes. I will say in the final analysis with this food component to the book, that's really the reason my book has been successful to the degree it has. Mmm, in Plymouth, Neil Persley, 12 News. <laughs> it all looks good. Cranberries Revealed is available at Metro Area Bookstores and online at cranberriesrevealed.com. Coming up, a magical experience awaits the Armstrong Marching Band. But first, Maple Grove gets set for state semi-final action in prep football. John Jacobson is in next. Well, this time of year, the games just get bigger yeah. and bigger, <laughs> and you have one, what, tonight, uh, Thursday, Thursday night, and Thursday another night. one Friday. And the 6A semifinals, winners go to the Prep Bowl next Friday. Maple Grove's football team reached the state semifinals for the first time last season. They are back in the 6A Final Four this year. Maple Grove is tuning up for their first ever matchup with Eastridge Friday night in the semifinals. Maple Grove had an impressive 32-14 win over Burnsville in the quarterfinals. The Maple Grove guys talked about the Eastridge win, about Eastridge and their deep playoff run. Oh, it's amazing. You know, it really feels good to still be around. And uh, we pulled out some good wins in the last few weeks, so uh, we're excited and we're uh, ready for step four. So we just got to play tough defense against them because they like to run it a lot. They got good running backs. And, you know, stop them, don't let them score a lot of points because they have good offense, and hopefully our offense can put up a lot of points for us. They got two backs that are really explosive. Uh, they got a running back who's about the leading rusher in 6A, um, and he probably is near 2,000 yards, and their quarterback's about 1,200 yards. And they'll, between them, they'll carry it about 60 times during the game. So they're, and they're very big up front. Maple Grove and Eastridge meet at 7 o'clock Friday night at Eden Prairie High School. Watch the game Saturday at 1 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Channel 12 and 12.tv. Also watch Thursday's Osseo Tutino Grace game Friday or Saturday night on Channel 12 at 7 o'clock. The Breck Boys soccer team took aim at a state title in Class A, starting with their semifinal against St. Thomas Academy. And Breck strikes Jack Johnson's corner kick redirected by Grant Opperman in, and it's 1-0. The cadets come hard early in the second half, but Breck goalie Hudson Hecker is dialed in. Mustangs freshman stops everything that comes his way. And then with less than three minutes to go, Avi Eller ices it there for the Mustangs. And they go to the state championship for the first time since 2005. In the final today, Breck faced Orno for the second time this season. Midway through the first half, Breck's Eric Smith shot had it in by the Orono defender, an own goal. And the Mustangs lead 1-0. The Spartans would tie it later in the half, no scoring in the second half, and in overtime, Orno's Alex Kill elevates to get the header goal off the Spencer Overturf corner kick, and the Spartans win in the 84th minute. Orno wins its first state championship in boys' soccer. The Benil girls advance to the Class A final as well. The Red Knights facing Orono for the championship today. Tied at one in the second half. The Red Knights' Sophie Rue crosses the pass in front and will come to number four, Alexa Tatarin, who chips it into the Spartans' net, and it's 2-1 Red Knights. Just a couple of minutes later, Amanda Cassidy nets another one for Benil to make it 3-1. Each team scores once more, and it's Benil winning their third state title in four years in girls' soccer, 4-2, the final. Spots in the Section 5-3A Volleyball Final were on the line in semifinal matches Wednesday. Top seed, Wyzetta, the host team as they faced Osseo. The Orioles play well early. Wyzetta's forced to scramble here, and they send a free ball that Tina Bow puts away. As Osseo wins the first set, 25-22. The second set is one of big runs. Kate Berg skips it off the Osseo blockers for a Wyzetta point, and they pull out a 25-21 win to even the match at 1-1. Wyzetta trails early in the third, but goes on a strong streak. Reagan Palish to Anna Kate Gross for the kill, and Wyzetta pulls away to win 25-17. They win the fourth set as well, beating Osseo in four. In the other semifinal, Maple Grove riding a nine-match winning streak facing defending section champion Champlin Park. Janae Alderson with a kill for the Rebels, giving Champlin Park an early lead in the first set. Sydney Hilly will set the ball to Allie Miller. She'll go down the line for her kill. 
And Champlain Park wins the first set 25-16. The Crimson plays the Rebels tough in set two. Paige Aspinwall to Alyssa Peterson for the big swing and kill. Maple Grove up 8-6 early. Later in the set, Lauren Bright blocks the hit from Alderson as Maple Grove almost pulls the set out, but the Rebels hold on to win at 25-23. And they win the third set, 25-16, and complete the sweep of Maple Grove. Champlain Park and YZ meet for a third time this season, Saturday for the Section 5 title at 1 o'clock at Anoka High School. In Section 6-3A, Hopkins will play for a section championship. The Royals beating Bloomington Jefferson in the semifinals. The Jaguars get the best of things early. Katie Cook setting to Megan Surstock. And her hit drops. Jefferson wins the first set, 25-20. Off the Jefferson serve, Tara Lee goes right side to Greta Werner for the kill. Royals go on to win set 2, 25-18, and the match is even. In the third set, Anna Erickson tips it over and gets it up quickly to hammer home the free ball as Hopkins goes up 2-1 with a 25-22 win, and they end up taking this match in four sets over Jefferson. Hopkins meets top seed Minneapolis Washburn for the title Saturday at noon at St. Louis Park. In the Section 4A semifinals, top seed Heritage Christian Academy hosting Maranatha Christian Academy. Heritage will tip it over. Jenna, Jenna Fugelstead with the kill there, and it's 15-8 Heritage leading in set one. Kira Smith serves up an ace for Heritage, and they win the first set 25-13. In set two, Eagles setter Maddie Torve attacks the second ball, tipping it to the corner with her left hand, and Heritage wins 25-16. They roll to a sweep over Maranatha, and the Eagles will play Legacy Christian for the section title Friday at 5.30 at Bloomington Kennedy High School. And that's a look at a busy day in sports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, John. Mm -hmm. Still ahead, Halloween proves to be quite the treat for the Armstrong Marching Band. We'll be right back. Finally, a not-so-frightening Halloween for the Armstrong Marching Band. The Armstrong Band was awarded the Grand Championship Trophy in Class AA for its performance at the Anoka Halloween Parade. That is a sampling of the marching band at Plymouth on Parade earlier this year. The group is gearing up for another big New Year's performance. Armstrong will perform at the parade and during halftime of the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. The marching band will also fit in a trip to Disney World while they're there. This will be the band's third appearance in Outback Bowl festivities. And if you're going to go to Florida, December and January, pretty good time to do it, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a good band. We saw them in Plymouth, and you can hear them. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that does it for us. Thanks so much for joining Community us. Community Corner is up next. We'll see you tomorrow.